Guess we'll just have to get by with what we've got. I wish to God you still had your job at the security company. Can we please talk about something else? Ever since you got laid off, you've been shutting me out. I love you, John. Talk to me. Remember when I was growing up, my dad told me again and again, man isn't much for man if he doesn't have a job. It may be old-fashioned, but I was raised believing that a man gets up and goes to work in the morning. A woman should stay home. Spread into my bones. And now look at us. You're pregnant and working. And I'm... Sitting there, feeling sorry for yourself. No matter what happens, no matter what life throws at us, I'll always love you. Oh, oh. I look a mess. I'm as big as a house. Hello. Speaking. Hi, George. It's Christmas Eve. Can't someone else come in? I understand. Yeah. I'll be there. It's gonna be. He calls, you come a running. It's extra hours. I'll see you this evening. It's Christmas Eve. We need the money.
Help you with anything? Are you doing all right? You look kind of messed up. <sighs> One empty the tail, please. Whoa. Be careful with that thing. Just open the register and give me the damn money. You really haven't thought this through. Otherwise, you would have noticed the security camera up there.
you're under arrest. I'm gonna get some spread them. Yo, Curly, you gonna stand there or are you gonna come in and celebrate a merry goddamn Christmas? Sorry. That's the trouble with people these days. They forget how to unwind, especially during the holidays. People get so worked up, they'll do damn near anything to make sure that Christmas is so perfect. Toy manufacturers and advertisers, they pounce on that like Oprah on a baked ham. You hear that? Every season, friggin' crime rate goes up. People get crazy this time of year! Hey, are you gonna serve drinks or are you gonna talk all night? Another shot of rum. One for me and one for my friend. Hey, uh, thanks, but uh, I don't need the cherry. Okay. You look like someone that could do with a drink. No, no, that's fine, thanks. I gotta go. I'm Inspector Tuska. This is Sergeant Manili. It is our duty to ascertain your whereabouts and activities from 1100 hours to 1300 hours today. He wants to know where we've been and what we've been doing. As you can see, officers, We've been standing here, arguing the pros and cons of Christmas. We've yet to reach a consensus. Can you corroborate that statement? He's asking you if what I said was true. Oh yeah, sure. How about you? Like the man said, we've been sitting here bickering about Christmas. What's this all about? The street gang tried to rob a corner store a few blocks from here. They will not get away with this. Good day, gentlemen. Merry Christmas. You see, I told you people get crazy at Christmas. Ah, uh, a master of the obvious, and so mercifully free of ravages of the intellect. around you and tell me what do you see I see people drinking and trying to get laid are you aware that Christmas was once a pagan celebration no the pagans called it you have you ever heard the story of the priest and the harvest king no no I can't say I have I'm looking back now down the long tunnel of time where life was lived at a subsistence level, and every successful harvest was a cause for celebration. When the crops were in, and provisions stored for the long winter ahead, the people of the village would gather in the great hall, where they would stoke the fires high, and drink, and dance, and love. The sounds of their celebration reverberated through the land and roused an ancient earth spirit from his slumber. And he joined them in their revelry. In the winters that followed, this lonely old spirit returned again and again. Over time, the villagers began to believe that this visitor was the harbinger of a plentiful harvest. They even took to calling him the Harvest King. Until the day the pale hooded priest came, bringing with him his shame, his guilt, and his condemnation. This particular young monk was of the opinion that anything sensuous and joyful had to be sinful. 
In a rage, he drove the old spirit from the village, for he believed that this pagan deity, this harvest king, was somehow responsible for the people's lustful behavior. Bereft of hearth and home, the old spirit wandered in search of fellowship. It is said that in the end his loneliness consumed him, and he cast himself upon the wind, never to be seen again. In the years that followed, the harvest went into decline, till the villagers were left with no choice but to abandon their homes and wander in search of better land, till all that remained was a dilapidated old church and a lonely, unrepentant priest. You see, everything we do in life has consequences. Yeah, consequences. Look, I gotta be going. See what I see. No! Here, finish your drink. You're standing at a crossroads, and it doesn't look good. Not for you, not for Maggie, or the unborn child. There's no shovel big enough to dig me out of the hole I'm in. Good. I guess not all stories were meant to end with happily ever after. It's Christmas Eve. Is there a better time for a miracle? Listen, Mister, I don't know who you are. Frankly, I don't care. But if there's any magic left in this old world, I could really use it tonight. There is a way. That a price will have to be paid for what we have to do. Whatever it takes. As long as no harm comes to Maggie. Close your eyes, and we will try. Whoa. Where am I? Not where, when. Good, we're not too late. Not yet. You know when the time is right. How am I supposed to know when?
I set off a silent alarm. The police are on the way. Let them come. I'm not running anymore. Just hold on till help gets here. See, Johnny, everything we do in life has consequences. I, I brought this on myself. I should be lying there, not you. I told you there's a price to be paid. I don't understand. Why are you doing this? Once an arrogant young priest drove a gentle old birth spirit from his home, and for this he was condemned to wander until he learned humility. Why me? I'm nobody special. A thousand years of wandering have taught me to see the potential in those around me. You're a good man, Johnny Carmack. Be that man. You have to lie still. Don't worry about me. I'm going home. And he found himself standing outside the corner store, back at the very moment he was planning to go inside and rob it. And because of the old spirit's magic, he remembered everything. From that day forth, he vowed to honor the old spirit's sacrifice by endeavoring to be a more patient, understanding person. And in doing so, he became a better man. The man he was meant to be. The end. Do it again, Grandpa. What happened to the old spirit? I'm tired. My foot's asleep. Isn't it time for How the Green Stole Christmas? It's time to meet your newest grandchild, Abigail. Hi. Abigail, Jonathan. Jonathan, Abigail. Hi. Hello, Abigail. Hi. Hi. Merry Christmas, John. Merry Christmas, Maggie, my love. Christmas Day, a faith for all eternity on Christmas Day. 